right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about um, some updates that Bamboo has made um, surrounding their Bamboo Connect and some of the information that's been out there. So I thought today would be a good um, chance to go through um, everything that they said in this update and my reaction to it, along with a couple of pro tips along the way to help us keep secure um, and help keep our printers secure. We'll also take a look at Orca Slicer and Bamboo Connect to see exactly what it's like to send a print over the network. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. Right, so let's get directly into this update. So um, basically, you know, they're reacting to a lot of the feedback around the security enhancements for X um, series printers, um, which is something that we talked about in a previous live stream as well. And some of the um, feedback around that. And I've seen a lot of buzz throughout the community. Um, so I thought it'd be good to kind of go over um, this. So, you know, it's good to see them kind of taking some of these claims head on that uh, they can remotely disable your printer. Uh, that'll block your ability, your printer's ability to print the functionality is restricted. This is all the stuff that people try to put um, on articles or videos to get you to watch their video. Nobody watches the everything is normal stuff. Um, so I think the first one that we'll go over and take a look at is um, some of the security um, stuff that they're talking about here. So it looks like there's two modes um, for this, a standard mode and a developer mode. And it looks like um, within the standard mode, um, you know, they're taking care of security or whatever on that and, um, you know, making it easier to use. LAN mode through Bamboo Connect will require neither internet access or a user account. This hasn't changed or and won't change according to them. It's in developer mode where, um, you know, the long and short of this is you're kind of on your own um, for security. If you are using developer mode, that might be something to consider is that you're on your own for security. Um, so one of the things that we can do for security is to uh, set up a separate network or a, a VLAN network for all of our um, Internet of Things type of things um, like a 3D printer. So I use um, Ubiquiti's Unify networking um, stuff, but um, we can follow s some of the similar steps in, um, you know, other routers and other systems that you might have. So let's jump in there and see exactly how to set up a, a VLAN network. All right, so here we are in um, the Unify network, but this would be the same sort of process that you would do for, um, you know, any other type of network, you know, router or something like that. So I have my main network, which is pennies, and I created this IoT network here. And under the VLAN ID, I changed that to 20, so it's 192.168.20.1, and that goes through 24, so that would be the range um, of it. Um, I left everything else the same using the DHCP server and all of that, left everything else the same. Um, so that creates a whole different network on you know my router um, for my internet of things um, type of things. So like my computer, my cell phone, and all of that stuff connects to this pennies network. Um, but now I have this IOT network that I connect other things to. Since I connect my uh, bamboo printer over Wi-Fi, I also need to create a Wi-Fi network for it that uses this IOT network. So we go to Wi-Fi, I created a Wi-Fi named um, bamboo network, gave it a password, um, and then told it to use the IOT network, the VLAN um, ID of 20. So now this Wi-Fi network routes back to this IOT network, and we've now separated our main network and a separate network to connect our printer to. Now the last step that we need to do is to allow access um, between these networks, but only in one direction. 
Um, so what we want to do is go to security and we want to create a rule that allows Bamboo Studio to the printer. And the way that we can do that is by allowing our main network um, and allowing traffic to our internet network. The other thing that you could do is just allow the, the computer that you use for Bamboo Studio or whatever to connect to this IoT network. And that would be a little bit more secure as well. The other thing that we want to do is to not allow our IoT network to communicate with our main network. So we do want our main network to be able to communicate, but we don't want this one to have access back to us. Um, so if you're using developer mode and all of that stuff, that could be a risk. If you have the printer on your main network, as somebody could hack into the printer and then hack back into your network. Um, so this would not allow them to be able to do that. They would only be able to hack into the printer. So it would limit the risk. So after all, um, after you get all of that stuff done, go ahead and open up Bamboo Studio. And once you have Bamboo Studio open, give, um, go ahead and go to the device page here and give it a couple of seconds um, to connect back to your X1C. And you'll see that we even have access to our camera. Um, so that's a neat little trick. And for all of your IoT devices, I would recommend putting them on that IoT network that you just created and using that from there. So let's get back into um, the blog. All right. So let's get back into some of their reactions, into some of the things that they said and uh, my reaction to their reaction of reactions. Um, so it says this is not about limiting third-party software, even though there's some limitations to third-party software, as we've seen. Um, it says that this is beta and not a forced update. Hopefully some of the stuff stays in beta, maybe. I'm just kidding. Um, about Panda Touch, it says that they reached out to Big Tree Tech. As soon as we became aware of their product, we wanted... We warned them that using exploited MQTT protocols was unsustainable and would place customers in an awkward situation once we updated the system. All of this communication occurred before the mass shipment of Panda Touch. However, they chose to ignore our warnings, says them, right? And again, it's not about limiting these mqtt protocols right it's about hiding it behind something else um it's the way that i kind of um view that camera feed concerns our live view services uses peer-to-peer -peer connection which means video streams directly between your device and printer only when a direct p2p connection isn't possible does it use server forwarding and even then no video is ever stored on any server according to them and we're relying on them to not get that <clears throat> intercepted from somewhere um so i guess um, third-party software integration with bamboo connect which is currently in development is designed to be a streamlined interface that maintains the convenience users expect which we will see here in just a minute while adding necessary uh, security protocols. We're actively working with third-party developers to ensure the workflow minimizes disruption to their user processes. So using third-party slicers like Orca Slicer, the difference in users' experience is not much. And that's a key word right there, not much. Not about limiting. Not sure those two things um, coincide with each other. Um, you're basically putting a buffer in between um, yourself and, um, you know, third-party software. So I consider that to be somewhat limiting. Print farm management. Yeah, so if you're using any of that type of software, it could be affected by this update if not handled property properly and i think that's where that developer mode comes in and again for the print farm folks i would definitely have all of those printers on an iot network so they're not clogging up your main network 
And then it says that you can continue using the current firmware, update the new firmware and integrate the new tools provided by Bamboo Lab and update the firmware and switch to developer mode for customer custom solutions. Um, so this is kind of interesting. And the only thing that I can really think of here is this has to do with the new, um, you know, printer that they're supposed to be coming out with in Q1. And I'm almost wondering if some of this stuff does, you know, have an impact on that or, you know, I can't really um, say, you know, a lot of things use MQTT protocols and it's literally sending some STL files or 3MF files back and forth. So I'm not sure what the big deal is or anything like that. Um, if you know where the big security uh, lapse is there, uh, be sure to comment below on that. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up Orca Slicer and see if we can use this Bamboo Connect thing. All right, so here we are in Orca Slicer and we have our Bodhi <laughs> loaded in here. Um, So I haven't done the update on everything and I don't think that this has fully been um, integrated, but what it would look like when you wanted to print something from Orca Slicer is you would go ahead and slice it and then under this drop down here, if you look at that uh, website that I was just on, it shows an option for export to uh, Bamboo Connect. So you would click that. And that opens up Bamboo Connect and you or you could save the G code and uh, import it into here. So as long as your device is connected um, to your account or whatever, then you can do that. And I guess Bamboo Connect, um, when I was first connecting this, will look for local devices as well. Um, but it looks like you'll just select an option there, which is then going to open this thing up, and then you'll be able to print it from there. So it adds, you know, a couple of different steps to the process. All right. So if you found today's video useful, um, be sure to smash the like button. I hope this clears the air on some of the stuff and we'll see exactly what happens to um, this update as it comes out. I think I'm going to hold off for just a little bit and let the dust settle um, and let it stay in beta for a little while. Um, that's my advice for everybody, but I would um, definitely create the IoT network, and especially if you have a print farm or are looking at using the developer mode in the new version of the software, make sure that you have your main network protected. So I appreciate everybody watching up to this point. Be sure to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video, and I'll see everybody on the next one. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.